science. There are a lot of physicians and scientists, doctors, even in this room, who disagree with us in this regard. They believe that if you find things when they're little, that then you can treat them while they're little and it is easier. And we do not disagree with that logic. But we also know that without exception, every time there is a diagnosis, there is a spiking of resistance, which means the wellness always becomes more resisted when a spotlight is put upon what is seen to be wrong. And so then the question is, how far does that set me back? In other words, if the doctor gives me a diagnosis and he says, but it's common, don't worry about it, take this pill, it will bring you in alignment, then he has highlighted something, but he has also brought you into alignment about it so there's no big discord that has been amplified in the moment. But depending upon how you feel, in other words, if he can make you really worry about it, if he can put you into a place where you feel true concern about it, now the diagnosis is the reason that you're pointed upstream. So let us see if we can hear your question correctly. I want to be well, and I've got something lurking, and I don't even know it's lurking, and I think I'm healthy, and if I think I'm healthy, am I? And we say, if you want to be healthy, and you're doing something that is keeping you from being healthy, then you've got negative emotion pointing that over and over and over again. So then our first statement couldn't be true. You couldn't be happy all the time. But it is possible, and we think this is really what you're getting at, or at least we can feel a lot of it bubbling around the room. Is it possible that I could be not sensitive to my emotions and that I could be moving towards something that I don't want and not know it? And we say, of course, you can be forking off in the direction of something that you don't want. And like we always say, and we love saying it, if you've got resistance going on and you don't know it, don't worry, it will get more. And if you've still got it going on and you don't do something about turning and going with the flow, don't worry, it will become more until eventually it will show up in some way. But we would not take a spiked level on a doctor's test as much of a signal of anything. Right. Is it the same with um, structural issues? Like about eight months ago, I started having a problem with, it, with my shoulder and there was a lot of resistance in my life at the time. So I kind of feel like that was an always, aspect that manifested itself. Yes. Since then I have released that resistance or feel like I've turned the boat flowing with the river and my shoulder is getting better. So I was saying to someone earlier, it's easier for me, easier for me to wrap my head around the cancers and diseases as being part of a creative resistance as opposed to structural issues, whether that's broken bones or, but it's all well, the it, same? It is all the same, whether you develop an illness or whether you get smashed by a truck. <laughs> it's still your point of attraction. And the thing about your physical body is that resistance shows up through the crack of least resistance. Have you ever heard anybody say, you're just a pain in the neck? Right. Or get off my back? And we are not wanting you to take all of these things literally, and a lot of people try to. But we do want you to understand that what you think and how you feel about it and what manifests always match, always match. We had a conference with physicians and medical people of all kinds in San Antonio a few months ago. And the most important thing that everyone sort of came to as a result of our chewing together was the doctors are looking for cures to illnesses. But until they look for the cause, they're really not making any headway. And the cause is the vibrational root. Right. Always the vibrational root. So you are accurate to say that if anything is not functioning in your body in the way you want it to, that there's some level of resistance going on. In fact, you could even go so far if you really wanted to pay attention to this, we don't encourage you to get carried away with it. But when you think about this emotional scale that we've been talking about, with despair on one end and frustration somewhere in the middle and, and feelings of passion and joy on the far good feeling end, you could actually place different physical conditions right on that emotional scale with incredible accuracy. 
Go ahead. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, it, other, it, it, it fascinates well, me. That kind of, it fascinates other, me where certain disorders create out of what emotional So resistance. you can sort of, first let's talk about the degree of something. So okay. if you have a joint or a neck, a back, something that occasionally gets stiff. Right. So it's not chronic, it just shows up occasionally then there's something hindering you. There's something you want that you are resisting. So we would say agitation, frustration, overwhelmment is about where that would lay on the vibrational scale. Mm -hmm. Now, if you said it's chronic, it hurts every day of the world, then we would say it would sit on the emotional scale somewhere around anger. In some aspects. Something your life. has right. you spitting nails. There's something that is just in your life and giving you grief and irritating you, and you're thinking about it, and you're po using it as your excuse to point upstream, and that constant vibrational resistance is causing the toll on your physical apparatus. Now, a headache that just sort of comes over you, we would say, has one of those overwhelming, frustrating spots on the emotional scale but if it is chronic then there's something that you're thinking about there's something you really want that you really don't believe that you have we would say that that's more worry and doubt somewhere on that emotional scale if a person has a heart attack or a stroke something where circulation is the reason for it that is evidence of a powerful flow and a powerful resistance in other words that's evidence of really really wanting something I really really don't think is going to happen and I've wanted it for a long while and I don't think it's going to happen for a long while and over time that's taken its toll we don't want to give this to you to worry any of you. We just want you to understand that everything has a vibrational relationship and that you could have 12 big diseases. <laughs> they could have already labeled your toe. And if you could say today, I am where I am, and you could begin the process of releasing when this bothers you and releasing when this bothers you and releasing when this bothers you, you would turn and turn and turn and turn so that a week from now, all diagnoses would have shifted dramatically because you've stopped the tension, which is the reason for the discord. There's not one illness in anybody that is other than resistance related. A woman said to us one day, Abraham, it's not fair. I'm a pretty positive person, she said. And we could see that she was. She had a beautiful smile. She cared what people thought. She sounded lilty in her voice. I'm a pretty positive person, she said. And I've got three bad things going on in my body. And I have a friend who is so negative, <laughs> who is healthy as a horse. That's not fair, she said. What's going on? And we said, it's the stream factor. In other words, when you have been living life and asking and asking and asking, you've got a stream that's moving faster, which means you've got to tend to your vibration more. You can't have a big life and be sloppy with your vibration, you see. Where her friend wasn't asking for as much, and so she had more leeway. Her stream's not moving so fast. A car that's going 100 miles an hour and hits a tree is a bigger problem than a car that's going five miles an hour and hits a tree. That's the story. And if you take that to if I have my 12 diseases and I turn my boat toward healing and I've listened to your tapes that you can get anywhere you want to get to yes. from where you are yes. in terms of healing. But here's what's wrong with that. If you've got 12 illnesses mm -hmm. and you turn your boat toward healing, you know which way most people turn their boat? Upstream. Because when they think about healing, they think about the problem. Right. When they think about healing, they think about what's wrong. When they think about healing, they go to the doctor, they get the test. In other words, healing almost always turns you upstream. So it's not thinking about healing, that's what we were getting at. Think of the cause. Thinking about healing is like looking for the cure. We want you to look for the cause, which is, this person's irritating me. I think I'll try to get over that. Uh, something happened in my childhood. I'm going to stop feeling my mother doesn't love me. I'm going to stop worrying about that. In other words, it's those relaxing of those thoughts that cause the turning and the healing. Comes naturally from that. Yes, it does. Here's another thing. Anytime you're the slightest bit sick, you're launching rockets of desires at many levels of your being asking for wellness. So it is accurate to say that the sicker the physical part of me is, the weller the non-physical part of me becomes. Right. Ooh, that was really good. <laughs>
the poorer, the less money the physical part of me has, the richer the non-physical part of me becomes. The more confused the physical part of me is, the greater clarity the non-physical part of me becomes. In other words, I'm becoming all of that, I'm just not letting myself go with it. So can you imagine living in life, having opportunities, not getting what you want and so wanting it more, not getting what you want and so wanting it more, and getting that stream moving faster and faster, can you feel how important it becomes that you start letting go and go with that flow? And it is not letting go and not going with that flow that resistance and therefore negative emotion and then eventually physical sensation and then eventually physical illness all comes from. And in terms of that healing, could someone take that to the extreme of growing back limbs, yes. organs? To that extreme, yes. But that's a big leap, isn't it? If you are so fixated on what is and so aware of the facts and the evidence and the reality, then your awareness of how it is keeps you from going with that desire even if you desire it. Right. In other words, we always say, there is nothing off limits. If this time-space reality has within it the power to inspire your desire, it has within it the components to deliver it. But you've got to line up with it. You can't doubt it and get it. You have to believe it. And it would be easier for you to believe it after somebody else did it. <laughs> so the, the big hurdle is the first one who does it. But isn't that true, the first one that does anything? Esther said, it seems like only yesterday that Abraham's voice was the only voice that I ever heard say most of this stuff and now I'm hearing it everywhere. In other words, and she doesn't mean that she's wanting to take credit for all, she means that it was hard to hear, people weren't hearing it and now people are beginning to understand that they create their own reality, they're beginning to want to direct their thoughts more deliberately. They're wanting that self-empowerment. It will put the doctors out of business if everyone comes to know the power of their mind. But we don't think there's much danger of that happening anytime soon because <laughs> humans, we love you, are sloppy thinkers. You offer most of your vibration in response to what you're observing. So what is changes very slowly. And that's why big improvements like you're talking about don't happen. Esther's been teasing and not. She'll say to Jerry pretty often, in my next life, I want three arms. But I want everybody to have them so I don't look weird. <laughs> and then she heard on the television that a baby was born with three arms. And they amputated it and Esther said, no, it's the beginning. <laughs> But there's the, the, the freak factor that you've got going on. In other words, you don't want to be too different. You don't want to be too different if you care about how others feel. So you have to be willing to let go of the way you are perceived in order to really go with those ideas. And all geniuses do that. In other words, as you look into your history, there are always those weird ones that saw things beyond what were. And a lot of them ended up in jail. And it wasn't until long after their death that you understood how right on they were, you see. This is the time of awakening. This is the time when more of you will discover the power of your own mind. And you will come to realize that you are undeniable in your ability to create whatever it is you are wanting. There are no limits. So in terms of healing, it can't be focused on healing the problem as opposed to releasing the resistance that's created the problem. That's the ticket. Release the resistance. When you try to heal a disease, your attention is upon the disease, and the disease is expanding in the attention upon it. We've been saying for a long time, if you want it and you believe it, then it is. If you want it and then you doubt it, you're holding yourself in discord. And if you really want it and you really doubt it, then you really feel uncomfortable. So the key is finding a way to believe what you want. Believe what you want. Talk yourself into believing it. Do the research. There are people that do this all day, every day. The doctors say, it is a miracle. And we say, no, it isn't. <laughs> it's just lining up energy. It's just going with the flow. It's just getting what you want. It's the way it should be, always. Great, thank you.